list of gruesome execution methods used to lengthen the suffering of a human being before death is a very long one. But the guillotine was never meant to be on that list. Before the guillotine, decapitation was done using an axe, which would often be dull and required many blows to lob off the head, which was torturous for the victim. The guillotine was considered to be a humane alternative, sweeping the victim's head off immediately into a basket without any suffering. The prevalence of this execution method led to the reign of terror in France, where 30,000 people were decapitated in one year. But how humane is it really? Deprived of oxygen or blood, the brain deteriorates rapidly through starvation, but many witnesses and researchers claim that the head remains conscious for several seconds before the victim's brain dies, which means they're aware of being a severed head. The electrical activity of the brain is a detectable source for a conscious experience. The 13 to 100 Hz frequency band is associated with consciousness and cognition, thinking. According to research, a lab rat's brain continues to generate electrical activity four seconds after being decapitated. Some animals are said to have brain activity for up to 29 seconds post-decapitation. In France in 1793, Charlotte Corday was decapitated for the assassination of revolutionary leader Jean-Paul Marais. The executioner picked up the head and smacked it on the cheeks as a sign of disrespect. To the astonishment of the crowd, Corday's cheeks flushed and her expression changed to the unequivocal marks of indignation. In 1989, an army veteran reported that following a car accident, the decapitated head of his friend rolled into his lap and changed facial expressions, first of shock or confusion, then to terror or grief. In 1905, a doctor conducted an experiment on the severed head of criminal Henry Langy. Over the course of 25 to 30 seconds, Langy was able to open his eyes and focus on the doctor twice when the doctor called his name. There are also many reports of severed heads grimacing horribly when a person touches the stub of their spine, sticking out the bottom of their neck.